naming is always a hard thing to do in games. You have to name so many things. So I actually have a list of just great names for stuff, especially with important names, like the title of a, of a game series, for example, is just brutal because everything you come up with, you compare it against other names is, is kind of the natural thing to do. Is, is, is it as good as Star Wars? You know, is it as good as this or that? But these are things that you, you might have grown up with and had in your la life, you know, since you were a child. So no new name can really stand up to these things that are known. Similarly, when, when naming our character, we wanted to make sure that the character had a last name at least so that people could talk to you because we knew that there would be full voiceover and we wanted people to address you. Um, but then the question is, what should that name be? And so we were thinking we'd like it to be kind of an all-American name, we don't want it to be something really, really specific um, and, and incredibly unique because then it's like, well, why that? You know, why, why that particular name? So we wanted it to be a name that was quite uh, common and, and kind of an American name. Um, and, and so we looked at uh, some of the names of the first seven astronauts, which have these great names, you know, like Cooper and Shepard and stuff like that. Um, and ultimately, the name Shepard, the uh, astronaut himself, I think, is, from from what I understand, is is a lot like the way that we imagine our, our Shepard, which is very tough, very respected. Um, when the reason that Alan Shepard was the first American in space is because he was voted to be the first by his his peers. That's how they they chose. Um, and you know, it was out of is out of respect. He wasn't necessarily the most popular of them, but he was the one that they chose amongst themselves to put forward. And so there's a lot of great stuff about that. And and then it has this the second meaning, which is he's he's the first human specter, and there is a shepherding of humanity quality to that. Generally, the writers come up with their own names um, when we're really stuck for something that, for whatever reason, the name is going to be really important. Um, like I said, I. We, we end up bouncing it around through email and whatever, and then I go to my list that I have of, of great names. Um, and then for, for actually the planets in, in Mass Effect 1, uh, I, I made a planet and name generator in Excel. And so you, you hit a button, and it actually generates a name, and it generates uh, all the properties of the planet so that you know, they, they make sense relative to orbit sizes and stuff like that. And then they have a description. Um, I think I think the descriptions were still written by hand by a writer, but I think the names still came from the name generator that I made in Excel. Usually, there's a writer who writes uh, codex entries. We have a writer who who does planet entries, um, and uh, and usually that person also is kind of the go-to person for uh, any questions. I mean, th this universe is actually bigger than can fit in my head or our lead designers or whatever, so I, I actually am not able to answer every question about how the whole universe works. But we do have uh, at least one writer who has almost all of that, the, the whole IP and, and how everything works in terms of the backstory and, and the, the characters and civilizations and stuff like that. We definitely need that because it, it actually takes several people in a room to be able to know almost everything about the Mass Effect universe. We do have internal documents that keep track of most of it, but, but to be honest, the fastest way seems to be searching the internet. There's amazing documentation out, out on the internet that we use, <laughs> and uh, fans have taken the time to organize it really well, and sometimes we actually use that. There have been a few cases where, you know, a, a made-up word or whatever in, uh, in a different language turns out to mean something that we, we never intended. Um, and then we just change it because you know we, we you know we don't, we don't want to offend anyone. But um, yeah, usually usually it's uh, or you know a symbol, you know a symbol, just it might be um, something that we we made up, or and then we'll find out it looks exactly like some corporate symbol that's out there. So we have to be careful, but we've got a lot of great people who check that stuff. When we were working on Mass Effect Two, we thought, hey, let's let's make something that's. It's just something, a little Easter egg, you can buy it in the store, and it's a magazine called Fornax. And I always thought that that sounded a little bit dirty. I think it's a, a star. And, and we kind of left it at that, but that has taken on a life of its own 
in the in the world of fan art and I I don't recommend you look at it unless unless that's the kind of thing you want to see <laughs> and it, it's extreme <laughs>